I'm Brian Kaplan, editor of The Banker. We're at the uh, IMF meeting at the IIF conference. I'm with Janet Henry, who's Global Chief Economist for HSBC. Janet, I mean, there's a lot of talk around the meetings this year about uh, a synchronized slowdown in the global economy. I mean, do you buy into that concept? All regions of the world are slowing together. Globally, growth is already now at its slowest rate since back in 2012, 2013. But at that point, the Eurozone was much weaker. The Eurozone was in a recession in the midst of the Eurozone crisis, where other parts of the world, particularly East Asia, were still very, very strong. Now we have, have all regions of the world slowing together to varying degrees, but all slowing and likely to continue slowing together. We've just had the, the news that China has gone below 6%, which I think is the first time for about 30 years. Uh, I mean, how much significance do you attach to that? I wouldn't put too much emphasis on the number itself. Certainly our forecast for 2020 and 2021 are sub 6% growth in China. I think what we've seen from them is, is an acknowledgement that they are you know, willing to accept a slower pace of growth. They're not going to stimulate at every opportunity just because there is a magic level below which they can't slide. What are the reasons really that we're in this situation? How much is due, for example, to the US-China trade dispute? Well, I think we need to go back to the start of 2018. At the start of 2018, global growth was very strong, Chinese growth was very strong, and the slowdown that we've seen globally in investment spending was initially policy induced in China. They were concerned about leverage, they were concerned that growth was too strong, they wanted to slow it down. 2019 globally has been a lot more about the, the trade uncertainties. It's directly affecting trade to some degree, but the uncertainty is weighing on investment spending much more materially. And even though we do from time to time get some better headlines on where we are in trade negotiations, companies can't change their decisions regarding future investment as quickly as financial markets can respond to the latest good headlines. And what do you think the policy response should be, uh, I mean, in the major economies, the US, China, Europe, to this situation? Well, as is often the case, when an economy slows to a rate that's lower than desirable and we've got a lot of uncertainty ahead, central banks are always the first to respond. The appropriate level of interest rates, given that uncertainty, is now going to be lower. But actually, monetary policy is likely to change the mix of growth. It can support leverage, it can support interest rates, it can also support you know, consumer spending to some degree. But if the area that's not growing is investment, it's not about the level of interest rates. So there is a role for fiscal so let's policy. Just go back because I mean, at the moment, I mean, I mean, monetary policy, I mean, rates are on the floor anyway. So, that, I mean, is cutting them really going to make any difference? I mean, some people think it's actually making it worse. Well, it is already in the US leading to an improvement in mortgage refinancing. Certain areas of the housing market are reviving. Even in Australia, you're seeing signs that the rate cuts are starting to work. In others, no. And it certainly it won't revive investment in spending while you have got this uncertainty. So that's where there is a role for governments to come in and hopefully support investment spending. Now we're getting bits and pieces on fiscal in different countries, but there has been a tendency to focus the fiscal spending on consumers supporting labour incomes, which is certainly distributionally fairer yeah. than just pumping up asset prices, with, perhaps with, with monetary policy, but to support long-term growth, it needs to be on the investment side so we can support productivity growth. Well, that seems to need quite a change of mindset because as you say I mean most uh, public spending is is transfer payments isn't it for, for for welfare and pensions and so forth not so much especially in the West not so much on actual investment spending. Not so much as you say especially uh, especially in the West. Uh, so it's, it's often because it's hard to make a material difference if you're building a massive infrastructure project or you're trying to improve education and skills levels. Uh, it takes a lot longer than the typical electoral cycle um, gives you time to deliver it. So yes, it, there needs to be a longer term approach um, for it to have a lasting impact on growth. Janet, we hope the government's listening to what you say. Thank you very much and have a great conference. Thank you, Brian.